Bonjour. Hello and welcome to Business Africa. On this edition, producing 70% of world cocoa, Africa has several assets to transform its production, but it faces many obstacles. In Kenya, tea producers are moving to alternative sources to counter economic deficit due to a fall in tea prices in the world market. Senegal is launching an agro-industrial processing zone, a vast 88 million euro agropole project. Home to over two of the world's major cocoa producers, Africa has enormous potential and resources to process locally. But the continent faces the problem of imbalance. Producers complain that they receive only 2% of the 100 billion US dollars generated by the global chocolate industry. Brice Kenu and Ronald Kato report. Africa is responsible for about 70% of the world's cocoa production, but much of the crop is shipped away for export to developed countries where it is turned into chocolate. The continent has for a long time grappled with the question of how to add value to its cocoa. Experts say value addition could unlock great opportunities for the development of the cocoa sector. And as with most of the raw materials produced on the continent, African cocoa is still largely exported in its raw form. This means lower incomes for farmers and abnormally huge returns for processors. According to figures from the International Cocoa Organization, the world chocolate industry generates $100 billion, producing countries receive only 6% of this amount, of which only 2% goes to farmers who are the direct producers of the beans. The three largest world producers of cocoa are Ivory Coast, Ghana and Cameroon. Look. Ivory Coast alone accounts for more than 43% of the world's cocoa production. Despite the challenges, several entrepreneurs have launched initiatives in recent years to promote chocolate made in Africa. Michel Ario, the executive director of the International Cocoa Organization for Abidjan in Ivory Coast, joins us to discuss further. Hello, sir, and welcome to Business Africa. Thank you. What do you think is the problem with holding African producers from processing cocoa? I think the situation is still improving. I'm not sure that's a problem compared to 10 years ago. I would say that today in Africa, we process 40 to 45 percent of the production. And uh, at the global stage, we are now at uh, 46, 47 percent. So that is quite a lot of what has been done so far. I think that countries such as Ivory Coast, Ghana and Cameroon have a very proactive policy which has made it possible to attract investment. But there is always a way to do things better. I, I agree. But I think what we've managed to do in less than 10 years is not bad. What are the disparities in the global chocolate industry income distribution? Yes, this is a very different question if we look at the distribution of the added value from zero to 100. And we can see that if a bar of chocolate costs 100 francs in America, in Europe or Japanese supermarkets, the added value of cocoa in these 100 units is 5 to 6 percent. What is important, I think, to note is that today there is, I would say, a disparity between the value added and the value created in the countries of origin, both in production and in trade or in processing to the export ports, if you like. Uh, and uh, all this may only represent 20% of the chain. There is still 80% of the value chain that is distributed outside of the production zone. But it also means that there are no real consumer markets in the countries of origin. If in Africa, since we are talking about Africa, we consume chocolate, or more exactly, chocolate products, since it's not the same thing, then we would see that added value is created and consumed and redistributed in Africa.
et se redistribue euh, en Afrique. So what we need is for the major economic operators, uh, whether African or foreign, to invest in the production and distribution of food products containing cocoa. La distribution de produits alimentaires contenant du cacao. What must be done to promote Made in Africa today and what are the conditions for successful development of products in the continent? I think there's a whole series of initiatives today that are moving in the right direction, particularly at the continental level, at the level of the African Union. I'm thinking, of course, of the free trade zone. We must absolutely stop preventing goods from circulating through customs tariffs and other costs. But there are also non-tariff barriers. There is an agency mandated by the African Union, that is the African Standard Setting Agency, which aims to harmonize these standards. And I think that it is a good thing. Then there is also a problem of currency. I think that we should work towards better convergence of currencies so that the exchange rate risk is not too great for African companies or that Africa simply dollarizes itself. I very much believe that the regional economic communities in what concerns us in Abidjan, the ECOWAS, there is also the Central African community, the East African community, which is very effective. There is also the SADC in Southern Africa. I believe that there is no opposition between these regional economies and the African Union. Rather, there is an approach in which the African Union is being built first by the building the West Africa or Central Africa. I therefore believe that everything is ready for a regional integration. Thank you, Michel Ario, for these explanations. He is the executive director of the International Cocoa Organization based in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire. A pleasure, thanks. We're taking a short break, but after we come back, we'll head to Kenya where farmers are diversifying to make up for the drop in tea prices. Don't go away. À la baisse des prix du thé. À tout de suite.